when you're trying to build soil health, you really want to be looking at where your soil's at and where you're trying to get to. And, and getting a, a soil test is a pretty important component of them. It's only about 80 bucks or so, so it's not a bit expense. And if you just target one of your paddocks and use that as an indicator paddock and then just, just look to scale things off that one paddock as you try and improve. And the key things I always look for in a soil test result is what's your organic matter level doing? That's like your blood pressure. So it's something that you monitor over the years to just see what's happening. The other one is pH. Don't let that slip. And a lot of your nitrogen fertiliser will drive that down. Try and keep that up in that neutral range. You know, it's around about the six and a half or if you're growing brassicas, more up into the sevens. Then there's a whole range of nutrient availabilities. Make sure your phosphorus levels are not too high. Most uh, veggie growing soils are really, really high. Uh, and you need to be thinking about um, do you really need to put phosphorus on? So most of your soils that veggies are grown on tend to be lighter textured soils, your sandy loams to loams. This is what we've got behind us here, a sandy loam at, at Richmond, and most of the basin will be using um, that sort of lighter textured soils. They're generally easier to work, um, drain quickly, but again, they can be degraded very quickly in terms of structure. From the farm here at Richmond, I've taken some soil that's been cultivated, so it's had the rotary hoe over it a number of times. Uh, same soil type, but it's been under um, pasture all that time. So really, under the pasture, it's got a lot of a time to rebuild structure. And I'm just gonna pop that into some water. So this one's under pasture, and this one's been cultivated. And you can see straight away how cultivated soil just starts to fall apart pretty quickly. And so you can imagine if that was um, water being applied either as rainfall or irrigation after you've cultivated, what happens is any structure that you've built, it just collapses. And so you see a lot of slumping in your bed, you see the soil dispersing and then drying out at caps, and that causes all sorts of problems. Whereas you can see under here, under the biology, even if I give it a tap, there's not a lot happening. The water's staying clean. So it, it's a really good example of exactly the same soil. It's just been managed differently. This one's had lots and lots of cultivation. And instead of building soil, you've just broken it down. And you've reduced your organic matter and you've smashed the soil structure that the biology has been building for you. And it just sort of flakes and falls apart under a bit of water. To improve your soil structure, you've got to do a couple of things. One, you've got to be adding organic matter. And so there's only really a couple of options you can do that. One is a compost or you can grow cover crop, so you're actually growing your own. That's on the plus side. On the negative side, the, ones, the way you lose it is by over-cultivation. Every time you cultivate, you're losing organic matter. You have to think about why you're doing it and you need to try and just dampen down and soften your tillage. Do that by moving to more uh, non-powered equipment, um, vertical tillage, there's lots of options. Pop across to the Soil Wealth um, website and have a look at our tillage and cover crop section and you'll get lots of ideas on how other growers have done that. So cover crops in your rotation, you need a minimum of six to eight weeks window and, and basically you just got to start doing it. It's really one of the only tools you've got to improve your soil structure other than putting compost on. If your soil structure's rubbish, basically your roots are not going to grow. They're going to grow down a little bit and so your rooting depth is really limited. So let's say 10, 15 centimetres, I've seen it plenty of times. If you can grow your soil, your topsoil, down to 20 or 30 centimetres, you produce more um, resilient crops. And finally, you always got to remember that it's actually the soil biology that it's building a lot of these things. They are building the soil structure, they are managing a lot of the nutritional aspects of your soil. So while you can try and just ignore it and, and come over the top with lots of ag chem um, and, and fertilizers and the likes. Basically, if you try and work with soil biology rather than just ignore it, you will reduce your marginal costs. By having a healthy soil with, with good soil structure, and it helps you both in the wet times. So you get uh, stability in your soil and your beds. Uh, they drain well, they hold together uh, under heavy rain. Um, but the reverse happens in, in uh, drier times. The soil just can hold more water. A good insurance policy, so when those 45 degree days come through and you can't keep up your irrigation, the soil's gonna 
carry you through it. And I guess that's the sort of key message is that it's going to help you in those difficult times when it's either too dry or too wet, or you're not quite got your irrigation or your nutritional um, timing right for the crop. It's going to cover that and it's going to help you grow a better crop and as a result, hopefully your farm will be more profitable.